Whether technology is a boon or a bane is a long debated topic. Technology has given us the power to grow and develop in countries, economies and systems at a pace which none of us had thought about. It is a very useful and powerful tool, the use of which is completely at our disposal. The glam of technology is very appealing to the young generations who have made the most out of it. But technology growing at this fast pace also at the same time provides enough reasons to pause for a second and think, where are we going with it? In contrast, what most young minds are curious about is this another question. What's next after? What's next? Technology has never been more influential than it is today. Many people find themselves in a situation where they feel like they cannot exist without technology. Advances in technology beginning from straight 2400 BC has evolved into meaning and material cutting across all areas of science and life. And the scope is very vast, ranging from biology, medicine, agriculture, transport, electronics, etc. Which, if simply put, highlights the fact that we are more surrounded and dependent on technology now than ever. Instead of bridging the gap, technology is seen to evidently increase distances between the rich who could afford it and the poor who can't understand it. The ones who have been able to understand it and update themselves have benefited out of it. All those who couldn't, keep up with it and are far left behind. So it's only about rich getting the privileges of using the technology and poor people not getting that. So it's like the two extremes. So whoever has the capacity to pay for the technology, they can, they can, they can always go for it. And people who don't have capacity to pay for it, they're never, and who are poor or who are illiterate, they can never have the opportunity to use it. Technology for them has always been a costly affair. All little attempts to use and understand technology by them have done no good to their businesses and have increased their cost as well as distributed the ease of doing business. Our major population is the ones who are not had a good hand with technology. So this technological improvement is only for the upper cream layer and it's not actually sufficing to the needs of the poorest threat of the society. Paytm for example has largely affected these people. Most of the customers would rather use Paytm than carry cash around with them. This has led to a tremendous decrease in the customers for the small business people. These people who earn only enough to suffice their meals for the day can't bear the struggle to go to the bank and withdraw cash from their Paytm accounts every single day. Uh, the other day I was having a conversation with my grocery store uh, guy. Uh, after GST and after the taxation, new taxation rule, uh, there was this mandatory rule that they take up softwares and you know update their daily uh, proceeds onto the softwares. And he was like, sir, I'm not going to do this because around he pays, he should pay around 2,500 bucks for the you know the software per se, and then you know uploading that data. So that. The whole thing looks very creepy to him and he just doesn't want to, you know, uh, go into that. more money. Yeah, also and that. time, resources, everything yeah. into that particular uh, aspect. Online retailers offer pretty much everything. Attractive offers, door delivery and many such factors draw the customers towards them. People fear technology because they are not familiar with them and don't know how to make use of it. They prefer to stay in their comfort zones and avoid a complicated life. They fear that they will not be able to use it because it requires a lot of learning, which most of the time requires an understanding of the English language. So the unleashing of technology has always been in an environment of fear. Whether created fear or real fear, it has always been that way. And I think that is where the apprehension to adopt technology stems from. Behavioral economics has shown that losses hurt more than equivalent gains feel good. Which is why these businessmen prefer lower returns and certainty over uncertainty and a potentially larger return. Trading businessmen feel that whether you adapt to technology or not, serious harm is already done in a way by emerging online businesses. That people don't trust suppliers or dealers. They don't respect traditional businesses anymore. 
was the big sales happening with Flipkart and Amazon. But not everything is going to, you know, give the right results because I've come across a case and it, it's it's pretty famous yeah. wherein you've ordered for an iPhone and you end up getting a salt packet. And on the other side, you order another product, you're going to get another product. So it's basically like you don't have that trust. You don't have that 100, 100% trust, though they give you all the, uh, you know, the notifications yeah, sure. and the confirmation yeah. confirmations and everything. But still, there is some gap that they need to, you know, fill. The emergence of the mobile app ecosystem has given rise to a plethora of startups, literally millions, whose initial finding idea was, let's build an app. If entrepreneurship has become popular amongst the newer generation, it is mostly because of the fascination to build an application or a website. This incorrect orientation of startups has led to a rate of failure as high as 99% which is not only shocking but also gives us enough reason to diagnose the problem as well. These failed founders and CEOs then often go to a stage of depression where some of them even commit suicides. You also have these web traps, you know, you, you suddenly open some uh, website and there's another pop-up which opens and then they have these catchy things so that you, you are attracted to it and then you just give one click there and then all your information is taken down from your IP address to whatsoever that is. Recent incidents have shown how even big companies and brands have given away lots of consumer behavioral data to hackers who then sell this data for cheap prices to marketers and to those with a not so good intention. There are also a lot of pain points where if I want to access some facility, I need to let go of my private information, uh, which to a certain extent is uh, very intimidating for some of us. I think I should be able to uh, restrict that uh, privacy and how much of invasion of my privacy has happened. If I am at home and in my space, I would naturally defer that uh, invasion to some other time. I would say, get, get back to me at a time when I am convenient to deal with you. But if that invasion is very intrusive and uh, uh, very dangerous for me, for my family, for people around me, then that becomes a cause of concern. Social media not only has become a tool for hackers to mine our private information, it is also widening the gap and isolating individuals, resulting in fewer social bonds every day. Human interaction has reduced drastically because of technology. Today we uh, have conversations over WhatsApp and other social media, uh, you know, uh, uh, portals, wherein when that person is right in front of us, we just, you know, ignore them and, you know, we don't have real-time conversations with them. No, I don't think it is making them less social. Uh, it is making them uh, more antisocial or... Uh, because uh, the connection is with a lot of people quantity is huge but what quality uh, are they using out of that is important the use of social media has shortened our attention span from 12 minutes to 5 minutes constant news feeds getting information in 140 characters and videos that are 10 minutes or less has literally rewired our brains now it has become a growing addiction among children also as well. Uh, the fact that they use WhatsApp and moreover like WhatsApp at a very tender age when it's not even required. Like probably they can go out and play instead. No, they won't do that. They go online and they have to play some online games instead. And that's what it has changed the physical world now into a vir virtual re reality world. People who are online an average of five hours a day have trouble remembering people's names, forget pots on the stove and even their own birthday. People are expected to do more work at home, which takes away time they would be spending with their families. Also, younger people prefer communicating online versus face-to-face. -face. When people are in the same room and communicating via text or instant messaging, instead of speaking to each other, there is a problem. Constantly being plugged in and connected causes an extra layer of stress that wasn't present before the overuse of technology. Children are using more technology now than they have ever used in the past. All of the negative effects that social media and television is having on adults are far greater when it comes to the developing minds of young children. There is no way to know what long-term effect of technology will have on our children because this is the first generation to have unlimited access. 
uh, like I said, I am uh, very uh, unsavvy, tech unsavvy. So uh, I would still be hopeful of a day when people will stop using laptops and they would want to not see the LCD but look at me as a teacher. So that's uh, that's my uh, that's my wish. With the increasing number of hate communication, cyberbullying, and objectification, we can say that social media creates a society of people who lack empathy. Technological progress comes with a dark side where ideas and intentions produce undesirable results. Development can be positive for some, but negative and isolating for the others. For example, the older and poorer people. Progress is often transient as faster electronics and computers dramatically shorten retention time of data and knowledge. This is also destroying past languages and cultures in a trend to globalization. There is already evidence that technology is destroying jobs, stagnating incomes and increasing inequality. As the process accelerates, we will begin to face problems technology cannot help us with. As popularized by science fiction films like The Matrix and Terminator, talking about the idea of technology advancing to the point where we give it too much control or lose control of it altogether gives us a reason to be careful of the times ahead. The technological singularity is the hypothesis that the invention of artificial superintelligence will abruptly trigger superfast technology, resulting in unfathomable changes to the human civilization. This AI will lead to a chain of self-improvement cycles, with each new and more intelligent generation appearing more and more rapidly, causing an intelligence explosion and resulting in a powerful superintelligence that would qualitatively far surpass all human intelligence. In short, singularity is a future that does not need us. We are already seeing the negative effects of uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, I remember uh, a news article wherein Facebook uh, per se created an artificial intelligence bot to, you know, uh, for its chart system. But then it failed miserably because the computer started creating its own languages and, you know, uh, communicated with it uh, with itself, uh, which is actually alarming. Artificial intelligence would increase rapidly and transcend the limitations of biological bodies and brains. The concept of singularity forces us to think beyond present to a time where technology replaces doctors, teachers and even politicians. A world like that is scary. Recent technological advances where robots are doing human jobs, be it mechanical or creative, where technology like CRISPR has made editing our DNA genes possible which can let you expect designer babies in the future with determined physical state, competency, eye color. The question raised at this stage where you start editing the code of life is where do you stop?